In a tiny stretch of the Kauru River near Omaru lives one of New Zealand's most endangered animals, the lowland long-jawed galaxid. But what on earth is this creature, considered to be as rare as the kakapo or the Maui dolphin? Let's meet freshwater ranger Pete Ravenscroft, who's going to help us unravel the mysteries of this tiny fish. I like to watch you when you walk. I like to hear you when you talk. I like the way you wear your hat. Mm -hmm. Where are the Lola Long Jaws found? This wee bloke is, is narrow enough and skinny enough to actually occupy. It's a very unique habitat. It's confronted with um, a system like this, which is, goes dry for five, ten weeks of the year. And then it will experience um, flows of about 136 cumics, which is about the size of the Clutha coming down here, and yet still hangs on. Um, really unique behaviour. Um, we believe it actually burrows down through the substrate uh, and, so, and seeks out the subsurface flows, where, which the bottom will be a lot more stable, where on the surface here, when you've got that 136 cumex, you've got huge bed movement, and these wee guys, which are only 50 to 70 millimetres in length, yeah, potentially could get squashed. So if, if it got any drier here, then they're still okay? Yeah, they are. It flows like this is probably ideal because it has the ability to um, survive in this where predators don't. The family of galaxids actually was named because a lot of them have these sort of sprinkling of white spots on their backs and early, early explorers and discoverers thought that it looked a little bit like the galaxy, so hence the galaxid. And as I mentioned earlier, these galaxids just occupy the in-stream environment where its cousins to and throw from the sea to complete their life cycle. Not necessarily to the sea, but some use lakes like giant kokapu, um, bandits. It's got an extended lower jaw. It's done it for a reason. So you've got your mayflies that live on the, in the water. And these guys are going around and picking them up from underneath. Oh, so the bottom jaws, yes. So they're scraping under the Yeah, bottom. well, they're designed for survival. Although these guys get very, very low in numbers, hence the threat status of it, they're actually very, very quick in recovering. We can get down to a few hundred. A couple of months back, we would have had maybe 10, 20,000 fish in here. Then you get low flows, the natural life cycle, and they fall over. And compared to most of our native fish, there's not a lot of eggs per fish. Um, Enang around that, you know, they're producing 800 to 1,000 eggs, so may, even more depending on the size. Bandits, I've heard of 8 to 13,000 eggs. Mind you, they, they've got probably a little bit more of a risky life cycle because they've got to go to sea and put up with all the streets out there. Sandal may look pretty innocent to you and I, but actually this fabric in the top here could very well be harbouring Didymo. So when I get home tonight, I'm going to whack these in the freezer for a few days, and then if there was any chance that I had Didymo, that should nail it. I'm an angler, and, and I have a set of gear just to go fishing in Didymo rivers. And uh, anything that I don't think is Didymo, I will use my other gear. Now these guys might just look like little skinny fish to you or I, but the lowland long jaw galaxid is an important part of our ecosystem and they've been around for millions of years. And if we look after our freshwater fish, the bonus is we get the benefits of freshwater for ourselves.